I'm showing us about Fiki. I'm also just reminding our participants. So most of us are choosing all panelists and attendees, but some we can see there's a little confusion. So when you share anything on the chat box, remember to choose a second option, which is all panelists and attendees. The first one is only all panelists, which means only we will be able to see it. If you choose all panelists and attendees, all the participants will be able to see. So please remember to choose that option when you're using chat box. Perfect. So welcome again, everyone, to this webinar, Firki's webinar on boosting resilience and embracing the peace during COVID-19. I'm Ellie, and I work as a senior manager with the Firki team. I'll help you to navigate through this webinar today. We will now watch a short video that will help us introduce the Firki website and its features. I request Balamis to do so. Site offers a diverse set of content for teachers to support them in their professional development as well as in their classrooms and is free of charge and easy to use. In order to access the portal, type firki.co and you will be directed to the Firki website. To register on Firki, fill in a brief registration form. You can also sign in through your Google account. You will have to use your email ID in order to create an account on our website. This account is again free to create and use. Once you create your account and log in with your credentials, you will be directed to the dashboard. The dashboard would have notifications related to your profile, course progress, time spent, and your Firki discussion groups. To access different pedagogical courses, you can click on the courses link on the top left of the screen. The courses page allows you to choose courses based on difficulty level and category. The courses are also available in different regional languages. Feel free to browse the different courses we have in our catalog using the search bar above. Each Firki course is designed using the FITS model that stands for Fee, Imagine, Do, and Share. The Fee section of the course helps you identify your current practices. The Imagine section defines the practices that one should follow to improve teaching and learning outcomes. A detailed description of strategies are highlighted under the Do section that one can implement in the classroom and with their students. At last, the share section talks about ways in which one can share their learnings with each other. Each course has also a set of reflection questions as part of the assessment section. Along with the course material, each Firki course also contains a learning circle plan and journal pages. A learning circle plan helps the coaches and mentors conducting the offline learning circles to discuss and share learnings from the course. A journal page summarizes the course with important points. We are adding new courses every month, so keep watching this space. Next up, we have the webinars page that is also accessible from the top left of the screen. On this page, you will find information about the upcoming webinars. If you scroll down, you will find a bunch of resources from our older webinars. These resources will include video recordings of the webinar itself, notes from the webinar, the presentation used by our speaker, and other resources on the topic covered do feel free to browse this section at your leisure. The final page to look out for is the resources page, also to be found at the top left corner of your screen. This page houses and will house resources from several of our partner organizations, such as the British Council, Khan Academy, Story Weaver, Pratham Books, and more. We are in the process of adding to the list and you can easily filter resources by partners, grades or standard, and the subject of instruction. We hope you find value in using these resources in your practice as teachers and educators. Finally, you can find the Firki app on the Play Store and can access these courses, resources, and webinars through your phone. So download our app and stay connected to teaching and learning on the go. Thank you, Valamis, for that. I hope uh, everybody got some idea of what are the different features available on the Firki portal and the app. So uh, now let's move on to the webinar today. Thank you for taking your time in joining in this webinar. In designing this and other webinars throughout this year, Perky team is hoping that we can disseminate meaningful knowledge and skills that take us closer to a goal of improving the quality of education in our classrooms. In today's webinar, we have specific four objectives. The first one is to comprehend the details of the research on what makes success and happiness possible. 
The second one is understanding two basic psychological tips that can support emotional growth and reduce anxiety. Another one is be introduced to five specific topics that can be practiced to nurture interpersonal relationships and remain peaceful. And the fourth one is to learn how all these practices help exemplify leadership. So with that, let me introduce our speaker for the day. Bhanumadi Suntareshan is a founder of Paper Kites. As a certified coach and counseling psychologist with over 23 years of experience, she and her team work on parent mentoring, executive coaching, and team coaching. They work very closely with schools and organizations on transformational projects. Welcome, Bhanumadi, to this session. Before we move to the webinar, I'll also share a few norms for this webinar. The first one is use raise hands feature if the speaker asks a question and one of us will unmute you for an answer. The second one is you can keep typing in all your questions in the Q&A box during the session. I will curate all those questions and ask those to our speaker today at the end of the session. Also remember that learning new things might be a little difficult or challenging. So make sure that you take notes or discuss with other participants or your peers after this webinar. This webinar will also be recorded and will be available on YouTube and Firki website soon. So we also have Anu from our team who is taking notes, a summary of which will be made available along with this recording and all the resources of this webinar. So I think that was a quite long introduction, but that brings me to the end of this introduction. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great, interesting evening. Just before I hand over to the speaker, I'll also remind all the participants when you use the chat box, choose all panelists and attendees, not only all panelists, so that all of us can interact with each other and see the chat. Bhanumadi, over to you. You can start, unmute and you can start. Very good afternoon to one and all present here. Uh, am I audible? At least? This is very clear. We can see you. We can hear you clearly. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much for being here. I already see about 100 people who are here. It means a lot to us because our ultimate aim is how can we make happy families and happy schools and classrooms possible. And so every minute you spend here is, I hope you find it worthy. So what is so special about today? Today is a very special day because we are in the middle point of the year. In a normal year, we have 182 days before us and 182 days after this. But because it's a leap year, we have 183 days before us and 182 days. Either ways, we are in the midpoint. And I don't think that there can be more special even than this to meet you all. Thank you so much for being there. Okay. Okay, so this is where I just want to begin. Um, we had the lockdown lifted in Vizag the place from where I am residing right now, uh, quite a bit back. And one fine evening, I told my brother, like, why don't we just go around with the boys to see the city? For me, it was all very easy, fun, jolly trip, because there's no one on the road. So I insisted that they don't even wear a helmet or a mask. And there you can see me sitting like, you know, with the orange sari and my niece and nephew sitting in front of me and my brother, we even found space for squeezing in my mother in between. And you can see the big box on my lap in which I have made so much of eatables for the kids. And that is this bag that's dangling with the boys having their underwears in it so that we can still play in the mud and water. There aren't any people on the roads, you see. That's the whole point. And then we came across this huge gigantic police officer. And I can't tell you how much I was trembling. I was scared. I was anxious and, and all sort of like everything, basically because I brought them there and they are at risk, but because everybody's going to point out at me, that was my mindset at that point of time. And as you can see in the second picture, this flat to meet beautiful beat constable just barged inside and took out this beautiful tool called mobile up and he said, smile. I don't know what is this childlike habit that all of us have in our mind. I mean, I just, 
we just all smiled at instant and it's so embarrassing to even convey this and he took these lovely pictures from all the sides before we were charged for our mistake and the mistake is totally mine honestly speaking this session should be driven and co-facilitated by this flat tummy gentleman we are yet to find him so until then i will be facilitating this session for you all and even before this air, we end this on a lighter note we have Shredda, who is here with us. You see, we took whatever are the charges and fine very seriously to the extent that even though we drove in a car, we wore the seat belt, we had the helmet on, and we have the mask on. I cannot emphasize better than this. Okay, so having said that on a very light note, let us just speak of this. Corona means crown. For once, this is a crown. That, we are, that is going to make us feel sick instead of making us feel happy. I understand from my scientist friends that it leaves a permanent um, pain and holes in the lungs. And uh, apart from that, there is also this problem of contracting diabetes one stage if we have corona. So I understand that this is very serious and we've got to take whatever other measures that have been given by the government and by the medical professionals a bit more seriously. So wherever we go, let's encourage our kid, kin friends to wear the mask, to wear the helmets, to maintain social distancing. And that with that note, I, I start today's session. Thank you very much. Okay, like Rest, um, Elizabeth rightly explained to us, let us see how at every point, let us pause for a few seconds for the sake of the educators and parents who want to again use this in their schools and families. So how can we weave this intended outcome and use it in our classrooms and families is what we are going to see right now. As you can see on the screen, the words that are marked in red are essentially the keywords. So when we say it to our children or to our classroom children or in the family, we sort of like emphasize on the words and also see to it that we achieve those intended outcomes. So if you see the whole idea is today we begin by understanding is there a research that can tell us that success and happiness is possible? Is there a secret recipe to it that we can use in our families without all those resources that are available in this world? And if so, I mean, assuming there is such a secret recipe, then is it possible to first begin with us? Because peace, we need peace first within before we have peace outside. So is it possible to weave it into it, into us? And if so, are there any tips for that? So that moves us slowly to the second one. And if this is what is the peace we get, then what is the outcome we get is what we are going to see. So the outcome is going to be emotional growth and reducing anxiety. Okay, fine. Let us say we have understood what is this sadness and happiness, and we have also understood like how can we support that as emotional growth and reduce anxiety by whatever practices we want to do. Now, the next point will be how do we weave it into our interpersonal relationships to have that kind of a community and growth. So here we, we introduce five specific topics that we can very much practice. The idea is not to go into theory, but to superficially give you those words and understanding so that you can start weaving them with an awareness. Oh, wow, I know this thing exists. So I'm, I don't want to be caught by those bias or those thoughts and all that. And so, okay, fine. So we understood what is success and happiness. We weaved it into our personal lives. Then we moved into our interpersonal relations. Then what? Then we need to find out whether if we practice, we get anything extra, right? I mean, that's just human tendency. So if you practice, I call you a leader, then you'll ask me what's a proof point for me to be a leader. I mean, everything needs to come with a proof. So we're going to see how we have proof and evidence on you practicing it, and then you become a leader. So this is what is the intended outcome today. I just leave this for like another few seconds so that everybody can go through it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks to the Filky team, they set the protocols like Ellie's right pointed out. Let's ensure that we are talking to all the panelists and also the attendees. I have add on protocol, which is what Ellie said. It's just emphasizing on it once again. Befriend the chat box. 
just be friendly with the chat box so that you know they, we are one collective big team and we talk to each other like we i already see there are 125 participants and all of us do not know each other so there's so many chances to learn from each other without framing judging and you know so much and this is such a diverse platform that we can do so much with this i am going to be posting a lot of prompts in between in the polls and i definitely want you all to like you know share your responses because everyone matters and your thought matters. And so in return, you might be having a lot of questions and we promise you, we answer every single question within 28, 48 hours. I mean, considering the crowd, I didn't say 24 hours, 48 hours, in case we don't answer them during this phase. And this is again, the reason is because we want to be a team and we want to clarify everything. The point is we want to get this to the kids level not even just to the adults level. So if you see the down bottom last line, if you can see that Elizabeth and Prerna, if you see that, show me a thumbs up. Introduction outcome. Okay, great. So I see that people are able to see the last line. So that is essentially when you download this PPT and use it in your schools and classrooms, we want to ensure that you have an informed classroom, like the agenda is set so when we are going through the introduction part that part will be highlighted in red when we are going through the outcome one cup part we will have outcome one in red likewise outcome two outcome three outcome four and closing this also in a way ensures that if you are bored in between you can go and come back for the next outcome so that's the whole idea of this thank you okay let's just begin with the first one which is the recipe, secret recipe for happiness. Now, I'm not going to lie anything to you here. I'm just going to tell you it's still a secret because if it was open now, by now, a lot of people would have tried it. Now, those who are trying it, it's still limited to the people who did the research, people who watched the TED Talk, people who happened to read it, and people who like us who are still like, you know, practicing it in small ways. We have not mastered it. We are also in search of that. So we are also trying it. So with all these 130 people with us, we are just going to enhance the number of people who know it. So what is this perfect secret and recipe for happiness? So there was a Harvard study which was done for 80 long years. We call it the grand study. And the grand study was done starting from men, women and diverse groups. It was the marriage and their career was studied the qualifications and their experiences were noted down. Uh, the, the, the ones who did not have economically sound backgrounds, even they were studied, not just the ones who educated from very good colleges. And then their genetics were studied, all their success and failures were studied, the mental, physical health was studied, their personal habits, lifestyles, food were studied. And it all began from DNA testing to MRI scan, and it all ran into pages and pages of questionnaire interviews and evidences. And what do you think is the outcome of the study? Now, I am going to leave it for the audience to decide. I just want you to guess what is the outcome of the study. So let's go to this poll. Elizabeth, would you like give all the participants about two minutes to like first hear and one minute possibly to poll their opinion on the outcome? Would that be fine, Elizabeth? Yeah, can you repeat the instruction first? Two minutes? Two minutes, possibly, while I'm reading it. They are also going through this uh, questionnaire to okay. decide what could have been the outcome. Right. And so one minute minutes, for them to poll. After perfect. that, we can decide. Yeah. 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 So if you, do you think that alcoholism is a disorder of great destructive power? Do you think that was the outcome that they found out from this study? Do you think that financial success depends on warmth of relationship and above a certain level, not on intelligence? Intelligence? Okay. Now, do you think the warmth of childhood relationship with mothers matter long into adulthood? Okay. The next one is, do you think the warmth of childhood relationship with fathers correlated with lower rates of adult anxiety, greater enjoyment of vacations? Wow and increased life satisfaction at 75 years of age. And if you think all of this was the outcome of the research, then you may choose five. 
if you think one or two or three or four was the outcome, you may choose accordingly. And if you think none of this was the outcome, but for something else was the outcome, you may choose six. Now you have like one minute. Can we give them one minute to think and poll, Ellie? Yeah, uh, Prerna will uh, launch the poll. Yeah, and yeah, you can see the poll on your screen. You can choose the answer. You don't have to enter it on the chat box, but on the screen, you can see the poll. Let's take another 30 seconds to answer the poll. So we can see the poll results on our screen now. Harimadi, you can see the results? Okay, perfect. We can stop sharing the results now. Okay, so congratulations for those who opted all of it. Congratulations also to those who opted either one, two, three, or four, because there is a Sanskrit verse that says, Purnamadam, Purnamidam, Purnat. So essentially, even if you have selected one of it, you're still right. What is not, is, is that the sixth one? So I'm sorry for you guys. So essentially, the outcome of the study was that they did find out that alcoholism is a very destructive power that financial success does depend on the warmth of relationship after a certain level and not essentially on intelligence, that the warmth of childhood relationship with mothers mattered very, very long into adulthood, and the warmth of childhood relationship with father does correlate with lower rates of adult anxiety, greater enjoyment of vacations, and increased life satisfaction at even at the age of 75. Okay? So we do have some people raising hands. Elizabeth, do you want to say something to them? Um, I'm thinking we can maybe go ahead and then when we take that break, we can just get back to them. Yeah, fine. Yeah. So I think, you know, this is what is the grant outcome study and ultimately what does the study tell us? Okay, let's just see that. So going by the same words of what the director said, he says that one of the directors who is Mr. George M. N. Weiland, he says that American psychiatrist, he's a professor at Med Harvard Medical School and director of research for the Department of Psychiatry. And uh, what he says is the warmth of relationships throughout life has the greatest positive impact on life satisfaction. The short answer is L-O-V-E, very simple. And so the best things in life are actually free. We can have success and happiness. And I don't know, we cannot claim this to be like, just like any other study, we can question 100 things about this study. I'm not denying this. But over a period of 80 years, with the kind of diverse group that they have studied and the kind of in-depth work that I have done, I think that we should definitely take it seriously. And so if this is the case, if everything depends on the kind of warm relationships that we maintain, I just want to pause at this stage about the research and share a few things that are very important for educators and parents who are raising and early, that is connected to early childhood. Now in early childhood, it's extremely, extremely, extremely important that we hug, touch, and we have the right touch with children and not abuse them on the negative side. 
on a, on the abusive and the negative side, even holding the hands of a child. Should I can I have your hands, please? Wait. Even holding the hands of the child like this and like looking at them very angry has the same effect like, you know, beating them or slapping them. And that's the effect on their brains. The same way the touches and the hug and the smile and the cuddling and the different things that we do with the children in the early childhood and during adolescence goes a long way in, in, in reducing physical pain in the later stages. It calms the brain. A number of neurotransmitters and the reward points are immediately given. Anxiety becomes low. Depression at later stages are very less. So for the kind of soothing effect that gives and, you know, given that it's such a possibility inside the houses, I just want like Shraddha to iterate this point and do one demonstration for us. Shraddha, will you? Okay. Hug. Yes. Friendly shoulder. Yeah. Thank you. And then a stroke. Yes. Then holding hands and looking into their eyes having long talks and then finally a good laugh thank you so much Riddha. that was very helpful so let us also look at what we have left over sleep is a very 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 important element the most of the distress calls that we get from parents and from the schools is regarding the screens and i don't see why any family had to keep the screens on after nine o'clock in the night because we need a good eight to nine hours sleep even at the age of adolescence for children. So with that, let us just look at the gist of the first outcome that we wanted to study. What does success and happiness depend on, Shraddha? Love. I think success and happiness depends on love. Okay, so it's all L-O-V-E and it's free, by the way. We don't charge anything, nor does the cosmic power. So it's very doable and we can start right away. It's very doable. So with that, now that we have understood that loneliness kills, which is very explicitly mentioned in the research, and we understand that warmth of relationships go a long way in building a person individually and collectively. Now, what can we do for this from a personal level? I mean, everything has to begin with us, isn't it? So this moves us to the second outcome, which is basically about understanding what we do, the two psychological tips to like enhance our emotional growth and to go down on our anxiety levels. So at this stage, I for call you for, you know, a, a call for action, which I very favorably called as project 111. Project 111. So what is this project 111 that I want to call an action for is basically we spend one second on the bed. Look at me and this is just one second. I'm not asking more than one second. When we are, and this is not something that I introduced, by the way, this is given by the book, the most beautiful book written by the person who wrote Search Inside Yourself, Mr. Tan, he wrote it. He said one second on the bed, if you can do meditation and mindfulness, it's more than enough to build a brain wiring. Where is the brain wiring that I brought? Okay, so, the brain wiring can be hardwired over a period of time when we just start practicing. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. So I'm going to ask you something very special. I'm just going to move beyond Mr. Tan and sort of like demand more from you because you're in this session. I'm saying like morning, you wake up, right? So we do one second of mindfulness breathing then. And night you go to bed, right? At that time, again, we do one second. And that's all I ask for. And if I'm lucky enough and you go for a tiny nap, that enhances it to four because you have to sit down once and lie down. And again, you have to wake up. That makes it four times for me, four seconds I'm going to demand from you. So during that one second, what can we do? Or what should we do to like break this brain wiring into a hard wiring? We just close our eyes, keep our bodies like a very big mountain and breathe in and breathe out. And during this one second, our full concentration essentially goes into our breath and nothing else. That's all is expected during that time. And the next one that I'm going to explain now has been told, not by me again, it's been told by Matthew Richard, the world's happiest man. And he wrote this very beautiful book called Happiness. According to Matthew Richard, 
a very important point of happiness is happiness is not comparative it is very subjective and that's the truth about happiness he say like tomorrow today i got a salary hike of like 50 rupees or 50000 so i'm very happy as it is than as today and today i went for a vacation so i'm happier than as today and as today i suffered less so i'm happy so that is not the case with happiness the case with happiness is regardless of what's happening around me i'm happy so how is it possible again he says meditation is a very good practice so if i go depth into it the students are going to look at this as more like a spiritual stuff and might or might not be interested so how are we going to put it for the students and the children we are going to ask them to wish someone happiness for 10 seconds every hour that's all matthew rich asked us from he just said every hour give people just anybody random people whom you want to give wish them 10 seconds of happiness so how can we do that just close our eyes open our eyes even while we are dishwashing we are walking we are climbing we are even being for that matter we just sit there for like 10 seconds and wish somebody 10 seconds of happiness when we do it for one month minimum every single day you do this then what happens there is a hard wiring that happens in the brain very simple this is not brain this is just thread i'm just telling you that the hard wiring happens in the brain and then what happens what what does it signify why should it hard wire as simple as that then your brain becomes your personal assistant it just becomes your pa so you don't have to consciously do this after that your brain subtly makes you do it when it's one hour it immediately reminds you oh, come on you just have to do it no 10 seconds and when you're sitting in the bed you just feel like okay i'm going to do this and you might just enhance the number of minutes seconds into minutes and god knows where all you will go so let's have shraddha demonstrate to us how this 11 seconds can look like shraddha how will you sit do you like a mountain when you're doing this can i see you sit like a mountain beautiful can i see you close your eyes may i request you for one second to breathe completely and think of only look at only your breath at that second excellent shraddha how successful were you able to do it in this one second i could have i could have concentrated more but i think this is i gave my best great now for 10 seconds may i request you to wish someone happiness in your mind beautiful thank you so much shraddha how much were you able to give yourself to this exercise in a scale of 0 to 10 may i ask 7.5 or 8 7.5 or 8 wow that's significant number it's i say it's my first time so i think thank you so much shraddha that was very helpful so i think now that you know and i cannot explain how beautiful it feels how enhancing this can be and what it looks like when the mastery levels are achieved and i strongly 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 believe and i want this project 111 to be taken over by all the participants who are here so that we make it into a movement where everybody every child in every household is becoming mindful and is being able to take forward uh, happiness meditation forward so with this let us just go to the next slide we just now saw that loneliness kills we definitely don't want this man to suffer with loneliness do we so we are all going to practice project 111 now we cannot project the breath is the third one obviously because you know i can we cannot spend one month sitting here doing meditation so i'm just going to change this a little bit i'm going to ask you request you to join me in concentrating on your breath for one second thereafter doing for 11 minutes wishing someone happiness in your mind 11 seconds make it 1 1 1 so instead of one month ka practice we still begin project 1 1 1 in a very subtle beautiful way right now and right here eli are we good to go perfect so one second of meditation and 11 seconds of wishing someone as happiness right yes and you can close your eyes and you can open your eyes you can do anything okay now just for today i am not going to be with you on this i'm just going to notice and observe you okay i see ashwath smiling and sitting like a mountain i actually see mansi doing it with a bigger smile on her face 
Okay, I see Prerna smiling. Great. Now let's take 11 seconds, please. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being there. Now, this is the biggest thing that we can do for enhancing peace within. Meditation and mindfulness is the biggest thing. And in our own classrooms and house, when we are going to ask children to do bigger stuff, it can be bigger only when it begins smaller in a very, very, very minute, granulated way that we can also do and they can also do. Like you and if you're running to office, you can still pause by for 11 seconds and say, okay, let's do this 11 seconds too. And then you run over. And then you and your kids are going to the auto and then you put their bags and you say, okay, 11 seconds. And then you are still achieving it. And it all takes like just about 30 days and after that 90 days. And then your children will remind you that you have to do it, even if you're missing it, by the way. So thanks for not leaving this man lonely. Let's pause and move to the third outcome, which is very important. Okay, so the third outcome is now we saw what success and happiness all about according to research. Then we understood like uh, how can we begin peace from within and that was the second outcome. We are going to tie and see if we can see five more psychological tips that we can use for our interpersonal relationships to be better nurtured and well. Okay, are we good to go? Please show me a thumbs up the panelists whom I'm seeing. Thank you very much. That's great. Okay, so what is the emotional bit? We are not going into the theory aspect like I said in the beginning. We are going to look at the most important keywords and understand it superficially. Okay, emotional bit is about seeking attention. Very simple words, nothing else. Emotional bidding is essentially seeking attention and it could be verbal or non-verbal. It could be a wink, it could be like a smile, it could just be like, you know, um, a request. Or, uh, or just about anything, advice, help, anything. So I have written the theoretical part of how it is defined. And now I have told you that emotional bit is this. Okay, what, how can, there are two ways in which we can um, act for a certain emotional bit. We can either react or we can respond. Now, how do we respond? We can respond by turning towards it Okay, turning away from it. Turn around, Shweta. Thank you. And turning against it. Okay, she's carrying me. Okay, I got it. Okay, so essentially, let me just explain it in another way. Now, this is like, you know, phrasing, turning towards. This is turning away. And this is like scaring. Okay, turning against. So these are the three ways in which we can respond to an emotional bit. I'm going to give you a solid example from my own life. And that's from my mother. And my mother is a sick per sick person with a, um, arthritis problem. And she always has this pain and suffering going through 24 by 7. But the best part is she's always complains of the pain in the little finger. The pain. I don't understand. I mean, you know, she has like 100 other pains going through. And all she wants to say is, you know what? I think I have a pain here. I mean, you know, that's a way of saying like, I do want your attention now. And whenever it comes, we all understand in the family that, you know, she just is seeking attention. We go around, like Shraddha told us, we hug, we sit, we chat, we listen. Money, she, she speaks and we listen to her with a great intent of like understanding rather than responding. We listen to her for understanding her, not for responding to her. So we listen to her and we have these hugs and in 15 minutes, she's back to like normalcy. I mean, all the pains have suddenly vanished. I don't know in thin where, where they went off. If you want to have like be able to do this emotional bit very well, I'm going to be able to see whether you understood or not by seeing how you pull for this. So let us say that your partner is coming to you and she says, oh, do you want to look at my presentation? Like tomorrow I have this presentation in college and I've made this. I don't know, something is not coming together. And you're deep down immersed in your work. Like literally having this book here and you know the deliverables here and everybody calling you from everywhere. How can you react at this point? Would you like to start this poll? Number one, 
you can say, mm -hmm, I see, okay. And the second way is you can say like, oh, really? Tell me about it. Let me see what I can do about it. Okay, that's another way of doing it. Third, whatever. Have you seen him working? No, or just like, you know, frowning upon them. So how would you react? Like, would you like to sit at the pool? Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. So participants, we can see the poll on the screen. Yeah, we can see all of you have started sharing. We have around 50 responses now. Yeah. We have around 50% respond now, requesting everyone to please answer this poll. You can see it on your screen. Okay, we can see Thank the results. You. Thank you so much. Okay, for those who are raising hands, I just want to like mention that we are going to take all the responses and questions at the end. Elizabeth, isn't it? Yes, yes, we'll take all the responses at the end. Whoever have raised hands, we will reach out to them individually. Don't okay. yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so right now, I am just like, okay, fine. So to those who have mentioned Horiali, tell me about it. Let me see what I can do about it. I think bingo. Thank you. So that was like this. To those who mentioned that, mm, I see you're still going away from it. And to those who whatever, can't you see I'm working? It's like going against. Well, of course, this is this is um, a very hypothetical case where we are saying because most of the times we want our children to immerse in a flow. And we want ourselves to be immersed in a flow of work where we just don't want emotional bids every other second and somebody doing an emotional bid, we just don't get around answering them and giving them our time. The idea is to grow a family or a school with a lot of people focusing on their work and going with the flow. So it's not practically possible every time you do this, so this has to be decided based on the incident that's happening. And considering that it's COVID time and most of the time we are there at home, you might just want to compromise on something that we say is focus and flow all the time and instead move about little because the family does require our attention every now and then. So with this, I'm just going to the next one, the tip. From emotional bed, we move to Generalization. So what is generalization? Generalization is just when something has happened to me in the past and, you know, the outcome of that incident was not very happy. Then I have this feeling that whenever I have a similar such incident, I'm going to end up only in trouble. So I just presume that whatever happened to me bad in that incident will keep repeating itself over and over again and again. So that's generalization in simple terms. And it can just arise because you, you felt something or you acted in a certain way or you went through a certain experience. So what happens, you know, how can we respond or react in such a situation? A, we can stay positive and in fact challenge our negative thought saying, okay, this is not going to repeat itself. So how do I want to challenge myself? A, B, we can try and keep open mind. Okay, whatever comes, it's just another good fresh day. Let me see what happens. This is another way of looking at it. And the third thing is like assuming that, oh no, this is all, this is what is going to happen to me every single time. And you know, that's how we look at it. So generalization can be uh, really bad because you know, I'm just gonna share you a very tiny experience as, as always, like before we move to something else. So as a child, like when I went to marriages, people used to make me work a lot. They used to demand a lot of chores from me. And after doing all of that, and you know, I used to be like ill treated. 
and shouted upon and frowned upon. So this had such a such a impact on my brain that I used to be very afraid to attend any marriages in the families. It never happened in the relatives again. I mean, it never happened in the friend circle again. So whenever I went for a friend circle, you know, marriages, I never felt anything like that. But when I went for the relatives circle, I always felt that I would be working more and I would be treated less. And this was this scared the hell out of me. So in order to come out of it, I had to constantly tell myself that I can challenge my negative thoughts. I can keep an open mind. And over a period of time, it has really helped me. Not that every time I have the desired outcome, but it has helped me stay positive and build better relationships. So with this, let's just go down to understand a poll, to under see how much you have been able to understand. Given the scenario, I could come up with this example, and you lost your only job at the covert palace of apparels. In the interview you attended yesterday, you did not get through again, by the way. And this is your third failed attempt. What can you tell yourself? One, at this rate, I might never get a job. Let me just talk about trying enough. Two, maybe I have to improve my people skills and try after some time. Three, this is really getting worse. I should just apply elsewhere, maybe. So, yeah. See the poll again. So, requesting all the participants to please choose the answer. We have 71 participants answering, requesting all our participants to please answer this. Perfect. Anumati, we can see the results. Wow. Good news. We don't have anybody who says, like, I might never get a job. Let me just stop <laughs> trying. Now, that is a fantastic group we have. And maybe, you know, I have to improve my people skills would be the first right, if I had to say, a growth mindset for us. And uh, we are still doing very well if we had said that, you know, it's really getting worse. We are still keeping an open mind there. But it would be better always to think like, okay, maybe I have something to like check on myself and improve myself and then go about it. Thank you very much for participating. Okay. Okay, so now we move on to the next, which is called as the confirmation bias. What is the confirmation bias? In simple terms, I just make an opinion on something without finding any fact about it. I just like jump into a opinion saying, okay, this is it. So once we form an opinion, what happens? That's very important to understand. Once we form an opinion in our mind, we just stop listening to everything else that would otherwise challenge us. So it's extremely, extremely important that we just don't start framing and making opinions at that point. We have a way of responding or reacting to it. Whether we want to react or respond is a choice we make. And one is we can challenge such opinion. Two, we can ignore them saying, okay, I know you, you always want to make these opinions. Now ignore, okay, fine. Three, strengthen them and, you know, sort of like you make your life even more complex and difficult. As you see, the ones with the thumbs up and the body stooped down are migrant laborers. They don't have proper foots, obviously, on the top of the screen, even if they're showing a thumbs up or they are walking down, the stigment still is very thin because they are migrant laborer stigments. So just going back on the confirmation bias, we just are looking at not forming opinions instead. Okay, I just will share a small incident from my life as always before going into something that I want to tell you as a story. We had about two years back an introduction to a school director who runs not school, but who runs schools. He has many schools. And we got into a very nice relationship and bonding with this, this beautiful person. 
and I used to send him text messages and mails whenever he asked me questions orally. I'm a writing person. So I found joy in writing to him with detailed responses and whenever I found time. I never like found that he actually understood about anything I sent even though he questioned. I always thought like, why is this man behaving so odd even though I texted him, like explained everything on the mail. And then we had this system called Life Map uh, where he was sharing in like two months and one of the things that he said, like said, boom. Like he said, I can read English, but I cannot comprehend English. So I've lived all my life guilty, feeling very bad about it. I said, what have I done to this man? Like I have exchanged so many texts with him, assuming that, you know, I formed an opinion saying because he's having schools, he must be like knowing English how to comprehend. So that changed my relationship and the way I was operating with him fundamentally. Let me also like tell you another incident here. Now this, as you see, is a very important picture. After the lockdown was lifted, every day I used to go and take my car to go to the office space that I was working in. So every day I was going, there was this two wheeler parked just in front, the big bike. And that's my parking space, by the way, excuse me. And I bought it. And this person, I don't know. And then I called this first floor Trinad Rao, sir, because I thought that was his son's bike. And then he said, okay, ma'am, let me just send my son now. And then he sent his son and every day he would come and open the bike and remove it and go from there. And this has went on for three days. And the fourth day I called the boy directly and I said, excuse me, what's your name? He said, Sudhir Anti. And okay, I'm not, okay, you're Sudhir Anti. Okay, good. So Sudhir Anti, now tell me why you're parking your bike in front of my car every single day? Don't you have a parking space? And he told me, this is not my park, Anti. You called my father, so I just wanted to be kind to you. I came down every, every day and took out the bike and this is my neighbor's bike. I said, wow. I mean, I'm just offending a 24-year-old boy instead of like telling him, thank you, you've done me a great support. I'm insulting him. I'm just like throwing a blame on him. I'm victimizing him. So it's like very bad. I had to make it up. That's a different story. Confirmation bias can be really bad to us. So the first we understood is emotional bit. Second one is generalization. Third is a confirmation bias. We're going to move into the next one, which is the action bias. This is like the picture says, completely, completely danger zone. What we do is like when certain things come to us, we would rather not wait at all. We don't have the patience. We just want to act upon it, even if it's very risky. Like we just want to do something about it immediately about it. So we go into either of these three modes. We go into a flight, fight or freeze mode, or as we call it, we go into an attack mode or we run away from it or needlessly escalate it. So this, what can we do, you know, is, is one thing. And before that, I just want to like share with you, like this small thing that, you know, the children came up with. I believe in one of the households, um, the, the wife was shouting on top of her voice, saying like, um, bleeding, I'm bleeding. And you know, the neighbors heard it. And they started tweaking like, you know, a harassing woman and there were 10,000 tweet and then 20,000 tweet, 30,000 tweet. And by then it's already, you know, like everywhere in the social media, people are discussing about it. And then at that point, like they came inside to notice that the child was actually searching for a bandaid. Now it's as simple as that. I mean, why would we want to do it sensationally naked into like this kind of a band-aid? I don't understand, but we can always wait and pause. According to research, even if we wait for 10 seconds after receiving a news or 10 seconds, we are able to think after getting a certain, like looking at the action, we can transform ourselves into a very mindful person. So all it requires is those 10 seconds of pausing. So let's just look at like, you know, this is a very important poll. I know that you will all be getting overwhelmed looking at what she's got like nine responses. Does she really want us to participate or run away? Please don't do that fast for 10 seconds with me. That's all is my request. Now, you know, on an action bias, considering what's happening very regularly right now, I'm just going to have this. For those who are raising hands, can we just iterate once again that we are going to like respond to everyone at the end of the session? Yeah, thank you so much. So like, you know, I, you texted your dear friend Shambhu. Shambhu did not respond, very simple. And he means a lot to you, a lot. What can you do? 
you can you text him one time call him one time and wait for his response one you can text him one time call him one time and if he does not respond tell yourself what belongs to me will come back to me it's okay so what is not mine will anyway not come back shambhu could even be in a challenging situation let me just pause and wait now the third thing is multiple times text him and multiple times call him four text him call him call his parents to find out why he didn't respond and whether everything in this end is fine now fifth one text him call him call his mother a few times talk him on the social media mock at him question feel bad about how you have been treated now the next is block his number and remove it from your phone next keep quiet and curse yourself in the mind saying everybody in this world dislikes me oh given what did i do for this now is your response any of this you can choose that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 if your response is a combination of 1 and 4 you can choose 8 if it is a combination of 1 2 and 4 you can choose 9 please launch the poll thank you so much you can so see the poll again requesting all the participants to please choose the answer Wow. Some sixty six responses have come up till now. No, we can see the results on the screen. Okay. 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 Very good. A combination of one and four is fantastic. A combination of one, two, and four is fantastic. Only four is fantastic. Only one is fantastic. Yeah. Only two is also fantastic. I guess like we are on the path. I mean, we have fantastic people participating today. Well, of course, I see. Keep quiet and curse inside in your mind that everyone dislikes you in this world. Well, I'm with you, whoever it is. I'm really with you because I have done it to myself a lot of times as well. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so we saw up to now four different things as the psychologically impact us. One is the emotionally. Yeah, I will just go to the next slide. Yeah. so the the emotional bit the generalization the confirmation bias and the action bias and we have come to the effect expectancy effect which is extremely important okay what is expectancy effect expectancy effect is essentially when we allow other people's opinion of ourselves to determine our actions like they determine and they form opinion and their opinion impacts me and i do an action because of that and that's it can be one of the worst things that can happen to us and i'm going to explain this with a very beautiful uh story what can we do for like re re reacting or responding is these are the choices we have we can challenge other people's assumptions by doing exactly what is right given our scenario and given our values this is extremely important Okay, going with the flow without questioning is another thing. Internalizing what others think and proving them right is another thing. Okay, let's just look at like the story. You all must be aware of this donkey parable that Prerna likes very much from her childhood. Let's just recall this wonderful story once. There was this this father, the son, and the donkey, and they're going from their village to the next village. and there was this teach for india fellows and alumni who were walking on the roads they said what a child i mean he's such a tiny child you just cannot do this to him the donkey looks healthy the father looks healthy why can't the the son just sit on the donkey and travel 
and the father immediately, the child immediately, the opinion of somebody else dictated the action of the father and the child. And the child was sitting on the donkey then. And the father moved fast. That's when the senior citizen association club members were walking on the road. And they said, what? I just can't believe a healthy child sitting on the donkey. I mean, now that he is now fine, he can walk a few footsteps while the father can sit on the donkey. And, you know, then they said, okay, I'm really tired. So they changed their attire. And, you know, the, the father then sat on the donkey and the son just started. I mean, it just so happened that the family members happened to pass that side. And they said, what? Can't you just see that the donkey is healthy? Both of you can sit on it and travel. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? And again, the father and the son made sure that somebody else's opinion like implicates the action they do. And then both of them were sitting on the donkey and they were traveling. And they went further down. And this time, the family, uh, the community, the neighbors came about. And the neighbors said, what? I mean, can't you just see that the donkey is so tired? I mean, you know, you just have to walk another a mile or so. Why are you doing this to the donkey? And this time again, the father and child ensured that somebody else's opinion was driving their action. So this time they started carrying the donkey with them. And this time the community came around and they said, what? I mean, you must be silly fellows, man. I mean, why are you carrying the donkey? All of you can walk. But that's exactly what they did initially. So we just have to pause at every, like, you know, phase of life for a few moments to think, are we driven by the opinion of what others are saying? Like, as we talk about this, I can actually see Shraddha writing something. Shraddha, now that you heard this story, what would you do? Like, if you are like, for everything that you do, people are commenting, then what will you do? Oh, is that what you have written there? Yeah. Okay, do you want to show us? Can I read it? Or I will allow my values to drive my action. And I will make a decision based on what I think is best for everyone involved in a fun-filled way. Okay, so why did you write fun-filled way in red, Shraddha? Because a lot of people these days, I'm seeing a lot of suicides and cuttings and also they think that they are not affecting anyone, but and that their family members are happy with their decision, but they're not. It is directly or indirectly affecting someone, the other person that they know. Okay, so even though like you want your decisions to be driven by your values and situation, you still want to ensure that everything is done in a fun-filled way yeah. and not in a harmful way. Yeah. That and that everybody likes my decision. Even if they don't like, it is not like I don't want to harm them or I don't want them to feel bad with my decision. Okay, maybe you just want to think about that when you're grown. But yes, thank you so much for that wonderful thing that you have written there. And I think like all of us, the same way have to just allow our values to drive us, which is extremely precious and important to us. So now that we have seen, let us look at how the, the three outcomes have flown and woven into each other. We just began by understanding what research says about success and happiness. Then we went into understanding what can I do, the project 111, what can I do to like enhance my own peace within. From that, we went into understanding five different psychological uh, theories about, you know, in valuing and nurturing interpersonal relationships. Okay. And so we go on to the next one, which is understanding how this, you know, we become leaders when we practice all of that. I'm going to introduce you to something called as mirror neurons. What is a mirror neuron? In a very simple word, if I had to describe mirror neurons, the mirror neurons, are, the, the neuron mirrors the behavior of the other as though the observer were itself acting. Meaning I feel the same thing that the other person is feeling when I look at them. So that's, that's in simple words, what mirror neuron is. For example, let us just look at what, you know, Shraddha is doing here. Okay. So when I see a ghost. Okay, she, Shraddha is seeing a ghost here. Oh, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, Shraddha is seeing a ghost here. And I'm already scared about it. Like, I'm just looking at her. I'm not looking at what Shraddha is looking. But I'm already feeling scared about it. I'm My face is also changing now. 
okay Shraddha is looking at love here on a screen oh when she is smiling and looking at it i just feel i'm also smiling i don't even know what she's seeing or what she's smiling at okay got it oh she's seeing some humor this time okay so how is shraddha <laughs> Okay, Shraddha is laughing. So I also am laughing. So basically what is happening is I'm looking at her and my mirror neurons are telling me, you've got to smile. Now you've got to be scared. You, you just have to laugh now. So these are the things my mind is telling me now. So when you act as a leader, when you act as a leader, everybody looks at you and they feel very great. A number of times for inspiration, you might have yourself gone into YouTube or something and watched something inspirational about somebody achieving something and you feel very committed and you feel very beautiful and you feel like you have achieved it yourself. That is because your mirror neurons are doing that to you. Now that again, having said that, the tough news is you have to choose your company very safely online and face to face. Now that's the biggest uh, challenge for all of us because what fills our mind fills our life. Now, the good news is when you start exemplifying leadership, the people around you, they get motivated and it immediately activates the mirror neurons because they are observing you online and face to face. Now, having said that, I just want to tell you that this is an extremely important thing for us to understand because a lot of time we must have stood beside a lot of leaders that we admire and we already feel like, wow, I want to be that. That's your mirror neurons in action. So having just putting it together, we just began by understanding what is success and happiness according to research. And then we went to understand what is project 111, where from even few seconds, we can begin having inner peace and mindfulness and from there, we went on to understand five tips on building interpersonal relationships. And then we understood how we can exemplify because our mirror neurons are always working. With this, let's just go and thank all of these wonderful guys because we are at the end of the session. Thanks to Matthew Richard who wrote the book Happiness, Chan Meng Tan because he wrote Search Inside Yourself. And they are the first two one and one of the project one, one, one. All the images have been taken from the search engine. The grant study outcome has been copy pasted from Wikipedia and the parables pictures have been taken from these websites. The technical support has been given by Firki team and the PPT inputs were given by Divya Ramesh and Ruchi Agarwal. The content feedback was given by Vignesh, Prerna and Elizabeth. Facilitation support was given by Shraddha. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so we come to the most important part, which is the educators and parents who are here. How can we use this information we have got today for our classroom? So I have these few things that I've written that I'm going to explain. And after that, we can throw open the forum for any questions. So how can we use this is something that you can use for early education until PG and adults. For adults, the content can be as it is, or you can add, delete, modify for the early education children. Also, this is applicable, excepting that you have to pick up the content appropriately and push for project 111 until mastery. Money not, not pushing, let's say use the word nudging towards it because you exemplify, they do it. It's as simple as that. Examples may have to be tweaked, which are culturally relevant and subjectively applicable. Maybe you might want to think of adding the challenges in the classroom school community or regarding family related challenges that the children face so that they will be able to connect to it. And what's extremely important, which we have not done today, which you might have want to practice if you want mastery, is like having multiple reflections and sharings after each of the point is described and provide more time for the children to think and respond within smaller groups so that there can be more time for each child to share. And there has to be multiple checks for understanding. We didn't do a single checks for understanding other than me asking like, Ellie, do you want to say this? Ferna, do you want to say this? So <laughs> you might just want to check whether the children have understood. Or it might just become another confirmation bias. So, and then until grade five, you might also want to think of having shout out of feelings. So how are you feeling now? After like maybe five minutes or 10 minutes of the class, 
would help vent out and children open up easily even more. And the call for action, we have to ensure that when you're doing online classes with the children, we just ensure that it's done until mastery levels because children need repetition and they need exemplars. It's just a matter of 11 seconds for you and I'm pretty sure like you can ace it looking at the way you have engaged. Now, exemplification is extremely important. So when I share my values, my children are willing to share their values. So just be open. That's what leadership is all about, being vulnerable. So it's okay because when you exemplify the power of their mirror neurons will automatically take over. You just have, to have not to be doing more. So this is for the educators and the parents. And so all the questions, there's no silly question in case we are not able to answer the questions in like, like a few minutes from here. All the questions, we are going to respond to every single question you have within 48 hours. And that's for sure from my side. And um, all the feedbacks, nothing is silly. Everybody's thought matters and everybody matters. So however you feel is silly to be, we are still going to respond. Now I, for the questioning session, I have opened up the questions in three different ways. First, I just want to request one big takeaway to be typed in the chat box by everyone who has participated before we go for this session. What is that one big takeaway for you from this session, if you have any? Elizabeth, would you just want to like iterate this point? I was on mute, sorry. We request all participants to type in the chat box one key takeaway from this session. So after that, we'll take over to the question and answer session. Quickly just type down, what is that one key takeaway that you have? We can see like quite a lot of things on the chat. Project 111, identify and be aware of biases. Brain can be hardwired. Leadership is also being vulnerable. It's a new thought. Interesting thought. The way I respond to a poll and to an actual situation might be different. It depends on how I, I feel at that situation. Project Having the need for self-reflection, pausing time before taking any decisions or judging a person. We can wait for just one more minute and we can start. Okay. How many responses do we have, Ali? Um, it's, it's a lot on the chat box. So I, sorry, I couldn't count it, but there's quite a lot on the chat box. Okay, so we can wait for another one minute, I guess. Yeah. We'll wait for another one minute and then we can move forward. Emotional bid, boss and act. The slide for parents and educators, that was helpful for some of the participants. I think now we have most of the responses. On okay, the so, so like, I just want to like separate the questions in two ways, if it's fine with you. Yes. I just want the educators and the parents who want to use the presentation to first ask their questions 
before we open it for others to ask questions. Okay. Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah. So whoever wants to use this presentation, so anything specific to this, uh, they can ask the questions and then generic questions. Is that right? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, anybody else who wants to ask any other questions can, you know, who's, who is like, who's just wanting it for themselves, not to be passed on. Perfect. Yeah. There was one question actually, uh, Bhanu, about the project 111. The third one was not very clear. So here we have changed it to 11 seconds, but then the third one was there with steps. So there was not very clear for the participant. There was one question around that. If you can quickly just explain what that is. Thank you very much for whoever has inquired that. That was very kind of you. So what happens when we practice something over a period of time is that immediately our brains get hardwired. So the third one is meant to say, please practice this for a month. Let me just go back to the slide and show it to you so that it's even more clear and you know we understand it better. Yeah, so here it is. One month we practice it daily, that's what it means. So one second on the bed, 10 seconds every hour, wishing someone happiness. And the third one essentially is practicing this for one month. So then, you know, it is one, one, and one. Yeah. Did I answer the question well to be understood? Perfect. I think that was clear. Um, there was also this one question specific to this presentation. Um, yeah, so there was a second activity, right? You for 10 seconds, you wish happiness for someone else. What if our students or what if the users ask, well, what happens when we wish happiness for someone? So what would be the response to them? So I think like I'm not a researcher, but from whatever I understand from what Matthew Richard has written, this is part of compassionate meditation and happiness meditation. So essentially it is in a very, very tiny, tiny, minute way teaching them how to continue meditation on a good way. So like there are different types of meditation and one such type of meditation being happiness meditation, it forms part of it. Makes sense. Okay, it's, it's a type of meditation where we wish yes. for happiness for someone. For, for happiness. Perfect. Uh, the man question. who said this is the happiest man in the world according to science. Oh, interesting. <laughs> So there's another question. Uh, is it possible to, to do this session with a teenage child? Is it relevant for them? You mean the teenagers? Yeah. To them, it's the most relevant, isn't it? As long as you understand the teenage is from 11 until 24, because the brain's prefrontal cortex totally develops only at that time. Uh, so uh, this part of the brain is like grown fully already. So it's like firing all the time saying, okay, I know I want to take risks. This is how challenging life has to be. Blue whale is correct, red whale is correct. All of that is going on in the mind. So for them, yes, it, it makes them calm and peaceful, particularly with project 111. You can see the impact immediately. But one thing I would strongly recommend here is to go for multiple sharing from the children's side. And to be trusted and told to them that none of this will again be talked about in the classroom and it all remains in confidential and you stand by those words. That's extremely important. Thank you for asking that. Perfect. Um, There's also one factual question. You have uh, mentioned a lot of books, names, and a lot of uh, researches. So can we also have those names? Will, we, will those be part of the presentation? Then we can take it from there. I have, have not asking. put them on the presentation. Okay. But I am very happy right now to mention them and I'm trying to share it in writing. The Perfect. first book is Search Inside Yourself. The second book is Happiness written by Matthew Richard. And the third one is essentially the Harvard 80 years study. If I have mentioned any other research in depth, I would definitely go back on the lesson plan and share those links as well. Very happy to do that. Um, I think those were a few specific questions connected to this presentation. Can we then shift a little bit and ask a few generic questions that have come up? Very happy, as long as I know how to respond. Perfect. Yeah, so again, for our participants, we'll try to answer as much as possible. In case if it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of a question, Banupati will get back to you within 48 hours. Okay? Perfect. Uh, one question is, how do we stay positive and happy? Even when people are constantly ranting, 
telling you that you don't do things nicely, always being negative around you. So there was this point during the presentation. How do we say positive even in such situations? I I think the best way to stay positive is being in the moment. There's nothing more curing and calming than that. You know, when we are doing the dishes and like everybody shouting on top of the voice, maybe because everybody's fed up staying back at home. They don't see the big picture out there and the difficulties and challenges. We cannot change everybody. We cannot put everybody in therapy right now. The only thing we can do is to still live in the present. When you're doing the dishes, do the dishes. When you're taking the bath, just drench in the present moment. When you're just wearing the shoes, wear it. And if you're just talking to your friend, just talk. That's it. I mean, you know, that one second, nobody can take it away from you. And I'm sure this is going to get over very soon. We have already cast, crossed the most difficult phase of COVID. And after that, life is going to be better. I promise you that. So I think that is the best way I look at it right now, considering that I have no context about this person. And thank you for asking the question. Wonderful question, by the way. That was helpful. Yeah, just staying, being present in the reality, in the present. And when um, I see the dishes, the pain that, you know, you have in the hand, when you're pressing it, the soap and the foam that's coming out, the water that's flowing, everything, just be in that. That's it. Uh, there's another question, Balamati. So how do I practice to respond but to react? So there were three options, right, where you choose to respond versus react. How do I do that? I think that it comes over practice. This really, really helps. And I promise you it helps. I am one person who have all my life like reacted like anything. I would have been one of those most difficult kids in the classroom and for the parents. And what I request you for this particular thing is just those first 10 seconds when you are irated. Just pause for this 10 seconds and then do what you want to do. Just rationalize with yourself in those 10 seconds. Pausing 10 seconds really helps. Do I want to do this? Is this the value that I want to add to my life? Ask this question and you will be fine. Your gut will definitely help you with that. Like again, I said, this is a very generic response considering that yeah. I don't know the context mm -hmm. and the challenges faced by the individual. I think this also answered another question that came up multiple times. Like practically, how is it possible to stay positive all the time? Because in some situations, we might be forced to maybe react in a negative way, but... How do we do that? I think this kind of answers that also. That no, no, is a very, very, very beautiful and relevant question. We're all human beings. Like I said, as most of, like, you know, other than the first one, which was just a joke from the internet to have a hook. Most of the other things that I said from my personal life are, again, from my personal life. I mean, I've not made it up. So it's essentially that even though we are aware about it, we are also faltering. We are still in pursuit of it. We are still trying to master it. So I think it comes fundamentally from um, like the peacefulness meditation, the happiness meditation and staying in. So the project 11 is the key to everything. If you could just grab the book called Search Inside Yourself or the happiness book, you will see that actually you have responses to every question down here. However challenging the scenario is, peace from within comes from mindfulness. Peace from within comes from a lot of meditation. And starting with even one second and 10 seconds, helps a lot. Pausing a lot for 10 seconds before responding helps a lot. That is the key. It's not like we are all God and goddesses. Like, you know, we stay positive all the time. Like we inspire everybody all the time. No, it's okay. Okay. Um, there is another question that I've come up, which is actually specific to this presentation. Can you please explain the whole responses of the nine options? So this person is a little bit confused. So those are nine options, if we can explain that a little bit. So I, the idea is not, I mean, you want me to explain the responses or you want me to explain the questions? Um, or what this, is right according to psychology? Or is that, what is the question? So the question you just stated is, can you please explain the poll responses of the nine options? I'm a bit confused. Maybe I think you can explain the key message from this, like the specific uh, I, Whatever is the poll response, I don't think that's relevant. Yeah. But what is the poll question has relevance yeah. to our life. What yeah. is extremely important is like, uh, let us look at the poll in itself. I have put up the slide on this page right now. So what essentially is important is like a lot of us, have gone through this phase when we have been close to somebody and suddenly this person just stops 
responding to us not reacting responding to us i mean what is this magical stuff where did it happen why did it happen we have no clue about it we have failed marriage is failed relationships because of that and so i think the point number 2 really is extremely helpful where we tell ourselves that you know what belongs to me will come back to me but it's not that i will stop trying i would give it one time a shot two time a shot maybe call their parents or go to their relatives to find out like whether they are facing any challenge themselves which is extremely important to know because you love this person that's the whole point of the case study so you love this person you go and figure out if they are having any troubles with their own lives and challenges and give them the time and give yourself the time so that's the whole point of action bias instead of jumping into conclusion to say that this person is wrong or i am wrong it's not always that nobody has to be wrong to separate and go their ways sometimes maybe everybody is right it's just a misalignment in terms of a certain incident and if it's bound to come back and make this relationship stronger it will we know a number of relationships that have broken and for years they didn't speak together and then they came back to be the best friends and relatives ever or they built the best relationship ever so we just it's just a phase that's it so how do we react to certain things like that is more important than what actually happened there because certain things are beyond our hands we just have to go back to stephen covey and tell them like you know circle of control influence and concern so okay so that's another link that probably i can share at the end of it so we can have a look at it as well okay great perfect thank you so much anu there is one question which might be a little personal so let me know if you want to take it up right now or maybe talk to this person later tell anyway just read out the question you can read out the uh, question and answer... i'll give you boss yeah <laughs> perfect with the onset of online studies so my teaching job has become a full time job actually i'm not able to give my own kids the time love involvement that i used to give them before i feel guilty so how do i strike a balance you want to take it up now or you want to take it up later <laughs> I just want to answer this in person to them because I don't know. I personally am in for face-to-face -face learning, and I think that this is a phase where a lot of people skills have to be taught to children about real life, and very little about the factual content from the book has to be taught at this phase. So oh, I don't want sense. to want the uh, the sentiment of other people who are running online classes. So I will take it offline with this person. Perfect. So thank you yeah, for asking. Support. That. the participants will be typing in the um, hanumati's email id and all other details in chat box so please feel free to use that and then get in touch with her thank you so much hanu i just um, have one thing one to say if you're end, ending yeah. this is this is this going to be end now i will ask one more question and then uh, maybe i think i'll i'll stop there and then we can close out yes ma'am yeah okay perfect So, um, Arthi, she has asked if you can give a few tips on how to keep relationships between teenagers and their parents going positive, rather than react since family suspended. I will tell you one thing. Spaces. I can promise you one thing. Just believe that this phase is going to pass and build trust unconditionally. I'm not even using the love and compassion here. Build trust. Just trust. That's it. if you trusted somebody very very deeply what would you do that's the only way that you will respond or react to your teenager right now like assuming you know we have no context of this family we don't know what's happening inside we don't know anything but this is one secret formula and i i promise you i have been through this and i have a lot of teenage kids inside the classroom around the schools that we work and personally you know i have i'm just a mother So yeah, <laughs> so yes, I promise you. Just build trust. Keep working on your values, not on the child values. They are noticing you every single second, and they are just going to become you. So just keep exemplifying your values. No advice, no fighting, nothing. Assuming you didn't know this teenager at all, what would you do the next day morning? Build trust. you didn't you knew the teenager next day forget that you know the teenager again wake up and say to yourself i don't know this teenager i'm going to be start building trust and do it unconditionally just that yeah. will work without knowing any context this is the much that i can say yeah. we can definitely discuss more about it yes perfect so we have sent the 
uh, the, the contact details in the chat box. So participants, please feel free to reach out to Manu. Manu, I think we can stop right now. Okay, Thank so you I, so much. I just want to for this webinar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you yes. know the, the beauty of all such things. You know, we could be just thirty group or forty group or like hundred group. But I understand, like you know, we have come back to like sixty four group. But whatever it is, like you know, it's nice to tweet and Facebook and Instagram any of this part of the session. It's also very beautiful that you tell the other people that you're practicing it, but practice it before you say that. It's just 11 seconds that I have asked from you for one month and it's so easy to do. So practice project 111 because you will be peaceful within. And that's where you start beginning, like building these resilience. Text us and write to us and we will respond to everything within 24 hours. Thank you for being with us from the beginning until end. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you so much. Would you like to share your thoughts on this webinar? How is it? How did you feel? Like I understand, like, you know, it was good to see the 63 or 61 people stay put right from the beginning until end. It would really be great if all the other participants were registered, but also there. Perfect. Thank you so much. Again, I would really like to thank you for spending this much time with us and our uh, users, thank you for uh, just sharing all this wonderful knowledge. Um, so for our participants, our next webinar is going to take place on July 7th with Dreamer Dream. So please keep looking out for emails in your inboxes from Fitki. Also, before you leave, uh, please take some time to give feedback on this learning experience. And we have sent the feedback form in the chat box. Uh, we also sent the speaker's details in the chat box. So feel free to reach out to Bhanumati. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much, Bhanumati. Have a great Thank evening, so everyone. Great Bye. Have a good, good day. Thank you so much.